Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neon. We're going to talk about Netflix and this Tuca and Birdie show, which I didn't even know existed until I found out it got canceled yesterday. And we kind of put it in as a footnote in a previous video on Netflix and their financial woes. Um, but it sort of blew up yesterday because a lot of people were really upset about this show being canceled. Uh, and they're starting to question how Netflix decides which shows they're going to cancel and which ones they're going to renew. Taking a look at the show, I can see why it probably didn't have a massive audience, but a lot of people are, are calling out the fact that Netflix is not going to take chances like it did before um, because of financials, because of a, a company mandate to trim the fat. So shows like Tuca and Birdie you know, may never see the light of day again on Netflix because they're expensive and they're for a relatively small audience. Uh, despite getting critical acclaim, I'm looking at them like, clearly this show's not for me, but whatever. Uh, so we're going to go out and check uh, a couple articles here on Fast Company, on the Mary Sue, on Polygon, all the places you would expect where people loved Tuga and Birdie. Before we do that, please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already for pop culture news, views, and rants. I promise Geeky will be back. She will be back. She's been very busy the last couple of days, uh, but she will be back. I'm kind of flying solo here for a couple of videos, and I don't think she has any interest in Tuca and Birdie anyway. So we'll talk about that. Fast Company, Netflix canceling Tuca and Birdie is a bad sign for all the distinctive weird shows streaming is supposed to keep alive. If we're all supposed to watch the same thing, why not just tune in to CBS? Uh, good question, but also, if these are distinctive weird shows that appeal to a very small audience, why are people going to subscribe to Netflix instead of Disney Plus, uh, instead of HBO Max or the hundred other streaming services that are coming out? You know, clearly this show did not have a massive audience, but there is no way to tell what is successful and was not successful on Netflix. In fact, it's gotten so bad that Netflix, Netflix has to go out to Twitter and ask people what kinds of shows they want to see. So they're talking about Tuca and Birdie, which is about two bird women and sex. Apparently that's what this show was about. I literally watched uh, two clips from it and I'm like, yeah, this is not for me. This is not for me. And that's fine. Uh, it's for somebody else, but it's not for me. But here we go down uh, about three quarters of the way through the article. And they said, what is the deciding factor here exactly? Was there a certain threshold of viewership an insufficient number of birdie memes in the bloodstream? Clearly not as many people must have seen Tuca and Birdie as did the purported pop culture event of the summer, Adam Sandler's murder mystery, what? whose viewership numbers Netflix selectively boasted about despite very little online chatter. That's, that's true. Netflix, they don't really talk numbers. They don't talk numbers unless they have something to brag about. Like Stranger Things Season 3, they bragged about it having a massive amount of downloads. Tuca and Birdie, I didn't even know it existed. We follow animation on this channel. Uh, I do watch a lot of adult animation. I didn't even know the show existed. So there clearly wasn't any real promotional push behind it. Now compare that to she which, you know, they never stop talking about, even though people don't seem to have a lot of interest in it. Uh, the general public, you ask them, they're like, oh, there's a new she show? Huh, had no idea. Um, but uh, you don't hear numbers for that one either. This is a, a good point. Like, what exactly, what exactly is a hit on Netflix? How does Netflix decide what to greenlight and what not to greenlight? Um, the first thing we're going to look at here is budget. Uh, Netflix says that at uh, the beginning of July, they said they're going to be more budget conscious. Animated shows are very expensive. Uh, shows with a lot of special effects are very expensive. And I think they're going to have to be a little more judicious with their money, given their financial situation. We've done videos on this before. Netflix lost 130,000 subscribers in Q2. They lost $17 billion, $17 billion in value in one day in one day and there's a whole bunch of competition coming but uh yeah the beginning of july they, they flat out said that the message netflix needs to drive home to their people is be more careful with money be more careful with money it's been a joke for a while that uh with netflix they would literally green light anything and throw a bunch of money at it uh throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks and a lot of what they've been bankrolling hasn't been performing now we don't know how tuca and birdie 
actually perform because there's no way to tell. But clearly, uh, an animated series is going to cost a hell of a lot more than a sitcom or, or something like that. And it also seems to be a trend now that they're canceling shows after three seasons. Uh, one Day at a Time got canceled. A lot of people were very upset about that, but I guess it found a new home on another channel uh, because it was so popular. But Netflix seems to greenlight their shows for three seasons. They allow a budget for three seasons. If you can actually call them if you can actually call them seasons, a lot of times they'll take what most people would consider to be a full season, 13 or 26 episodes, and then divide it up into chunks, you know, and that's your quote unquote season, even if the season only winds up being like six episodes. So, you know, it, it is an interesting trend. And with Netflix, again, you know, this comes back to how people watch Netflix compared to how they watch uh, broadcast television. You don't have to constantly have new content because somebody is going to binge watch a show for the first time, even if it's been off the quote unquote off the air for like two years, right? They can go back and watch one day at a time or Tuca and Birdie and binge it in a day or two. And to Netflix, it's like, oh boy, more watch time. We got more uh, value out of this, um, you know, but does it bring a value to subscribers to just have an archive of, of old content? I don't think so. Uh, so, we're talking about, uh, you know, how they're trying to fix this lopsided promotional strategies. They actually had to go out to Twitter and ask people, how do we fix this? This is coming from the Mary Sue. How do we fix this? Uh, the Mary Sue's all, all upset about Tuca and Birdie. They're all upset about Tuca and Birdie. Uh, shows like Tuca and Birdie get canceled because there's virtually no record that the show even exists online other than fans who already watch the show praising it. That's true. I didn't even know the show existed. We do watch animation. I'm like, oh, it's a weird bird show. That's interesting. Oh, it's canceled already. Um, Netflix and all its glory should be the one out there giving us trailers and jokes and letting us see the beauty that one day at a time was instead of promoting the shows that are more white and hip. Oh, God, you know, you know, you had me, Mary Sue, but then I, I just remembered uh, which website I'm, I'm reading. Uh, Netflix and all its glory should be out there giving us trailers and jokes and letting us see the beauty that is one day at a time instead of promoting the shows that are more white and heterosexual. Now I remembered I'm reading the Mary Sue. Look at a show like Sense8, uh, diverse, beautiful, and canceled because Netflix didn't promote it the same way they do shows like Stranger Things. Stranger Things was an unexpected hit. I think they promoted it, but they didn't promote it. I don't think at the beginning they promoted it any more than any other show uh, on Netflix. It just it, it exploded because people really took to it because you know you had a, a really good cast, you had a lot of callbacks to the 1980s. It was a show for everybody. It was designed um, for everyone. It was a callback to the 1980s, and it became a, a sleeper hit. It became a, a huge thing. And I don't remember there being a lot of push at the beginning for Stranger Things. I think sometimes Netflix just green lights the stuff, they put it out there, they see how it does organically, and, uh, you know, and go from there. I, I, I don't think that they expected Stranger Things to be the big hit that it was, but once they realized it was going to be a huge hit, then yeah, they started promoting the hell out of it, and it basically became the Stranger Things channel. So that's where the problem lies, and asking Twitter what to do, it's both letting people know that they're at least trying to be better, because we can't have these shows all be white and heterosexual, uh, but also that Netflix doesn't see the problem with how they're currently promoting their shows. So when Netflix's social media manager, Jarrett uh, Weiselman, took to Twitter to ask what Netflix could do better to promote their shows, the answers weren't that surprising. So Jarrett says, when a Netflix show gets canceled, you didn't promote the show is something we, yes, I work at Netflix here a lot, but what does that mean to you? Commercials or billboards, too few social posts, you're not shown the title when you log into Netflix, something else, a combination of all the above. So yes, uh, too, all that sometimes you generally don't know when new season starts, only new shows get heavy promo, everything else is word of mouth. That, that actually is somewhat true. I think it's a combination of everything you mentioned. You need billboards and social media. You need commercials. Well, they cost money. Netflix is cutting back. It means that every time I turn on Netflix, I see the same autoplay preview that they're pumping all their effort into. This week, it's comedians and cars. I couldn't be less interested in either of those, but there they are. Uh, maybe there should be a spin the wheel type mystery box that's what you want. You want to subscribe to a streaming service and, and spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Uh, the lack of promotion of Sense8 once season two dropped was startling. Uh, Netflix doesn't release this. This is a big one. Netflix doesn't release its viewing figures, so we don't even know how the show fared. Uh, it, if it's a first season, it wasn't given a chance to grow. We're all shareholders in Netflix, yet it's answerable to nobody. 
It's not enough to say that Netflix didn't promote the show. I actually agree with uh, Casper Salmon. Casper Salmon. Netflix does not release its viewing figures, and I think they need to do that. Uh, even Comicsology, right? Uh, dealing with digital comics. I mean, they're very obtuse, but you know what the top 10 list is, the top 20, whatever. You have a basic idea of which shows are doing well and which shows are not. But, you know, I don't think Netflix really wants to put those numbers out there because sometimes they do bet money on the wrong thing. You know, they don't want to admit that maybe they spent, you know, $50 million on a movie with uh, a bigger Hollywood name only to have people not watch it. It doesn't look good. You know, it might it might look really bad. It might blow up in their faces if the most popular content on Netflix is not Netflix original content, but content that belongs to another studio uh, like The Office, like Friends, that's going to go to a competing streaming service. I mean, how would you like how is that going to look to shareholders to put that out there and be like, yeah, our top shows The Office and you know what? We're losing it in two years. You know, that's not going to look very good. So, yeah, they're of course, they're going to be like you know, guarded about that, but it does not give you a good indication of how shows are actually doing. I can only guess in the case of Tuca and Birdie, it was a combination of two factors, uh, complete lack of interest from the general public because the show is really, really niche to put it, to put it mildly. Uh, and, and it's expensive. It's animated. They could justify it. If it was something like Voltron, they have more mass appeal. Um, I'm even wondering again, you know, is Shira going to get a fourth season? I think they're pushing it really hard right now. Geeky and I have talked about this at length that we think they're pushing Shira really hard with the toys and at PowerCon trying to get a fourth season because Netflix tends to cancel things after three seasons. There might not be any more Shira after this because it is an expensive show to produce. Uh, so let's go out and look at some of the other reactions to Tuca and Birdie getting canceled. Netflix canceled Tuca and Birdie, the horny show. I love this. The horny show some of us needed in our lives. An ode to the best raunchy adult comedy out there and the only one that catered to women. Tuca and Birdie was the rare, raunchy, rowdy, horny adult animated comedy that unapologetically catered to women. For many, it was the first time that the show and the genre ever made them feel welcome. Um, yeah, but again, every one of these words sort of narrows down the audience. We've got a cartoon about bird women talking about sex. You know, that's, you're only gonna, you're only gonna get so many people interested in that, I think. Uh, they talk about how most of the adult cartoons like BoJack Horseman, Archer, Futurama, Family Guy, uh, cater more to men. I, I will agree with that. I will agree with that. Um, but Tuca and Birdie was for women and it's raunchy. Those things are not mutually exclusive. Tuca and Birdie showed off a horny, rowdy world where women are agents of their own desires and not objects being lusted after by male characters. Not to say that the women in the show don't get objectified by male characters. It's just from the female character's point of view. So instead of just taking the sexualization as something normal, they get to react to it with feeling. So Tuca makes some extra cash on a live chat sex game. I can't imagine why this got canceled. I really can't. The sex and nudity of the show worked hand in hand with the humor without making fans feel like voyeurs. Things are presented as everyday facts of life. And the show, oh, best example, the boobs. The show is chock full of boobs, buildings and boobs. Tuca casually walks around shirtless. The cool, aloof plant lady who lives downstairs goes topless. The boobs weren't sexualized or gawked at. They were just boobs. In an age where Instagram still blocks topless women and, and Tumblr cracked down on female presenting nipples, the internalized sexualization of breasts continue to pervade, but in Tuca and Birdie, boobs are boobs. So they're angry that Tuca and Birdie got canceled because uh, boobs. But again, I've only seen a couple clips of the show just to kind of look into it, and I, I it just had a very uh, small audience, you know, and it's it looked expensive. Netflix seriously disappoints with the abrupt cancellation of Tuca and Birdie. When it comes to weird, risky ideas, Netflix has a reputation for generosity. In regards to 2D animation, they've, they've done a lot. Big Mouth, Hilda, Bojack Horseman, Tuca and Birdie emerged from the space carved out by Bojack Horseman. And it stood out as something truly unique. From the raving critical response and passionate community that sprung up to support it, the show clearly resonated with people in a way that raw, honest art often does. According to Netflix's algorithm, according to the Netflix algorithm, however, the show wasn't popular enough to continue paying for it. Then they talk about how uh, they are actually cracking down on costs at Netflix. You know, 
this is really uh, it. In this kind of, you know, I, I mean, look, Toucan Birdie clearly was not for me, but animated shows are expensive. So I have to wonder if Netflix, which has really ramped up the animated series in the last couple of years and some really great stuff like Dragon Prince and Hilda, I have to wonder if they're not going to cut back on animated series uh, because they are very, very expensive and they're risky. You know, you put something out there, it's risky. Now you're going to get remakes like Voltron and Shira because you're you're minimizing your risk because it is established. Anime, you're minimizing your risk because a lot of times you're just uh, redubbing an existing anime, or uh, you know, Japanese studios help eating the cost. But you know, when Netflix went out and they they started their own animation studio, a short time after they announced their animation studio, they're they're you know, cutting shows like Tuka and Birdie, and they're saying that they're going to trim the fat, that they're going to cut costs. It makes you wonder how many animated series Netflix is actually going to produce at this point, or if everything they produce is going to be uh, kid stuff, which they're making a big deal about, and they're going to do kid stuff because they can sell toys. Uh, so I don't think you're going to see a lot of really experimental uh, anime or animation from Netflix in the future. I think they're going to play it safe because they have to, because the money is just not there. While Tuka and Birdie gets canceled, Netflix just announced that they renewed Big Mouth. And it is a uh, similar demographic. I just don't think it's quite as weird as Tuka and Birdie. So, you know, again, how does Netflix quantify what a success actually is? Um, so, you know, it's going to be really interesting going forward to see how Netflix does and how they handle things and their their attitude basically was like look we canceled this weird show but it's going to be on here to stream for years um so there you go and that is their attitude compared to broadcast TV it's like well we drop some content on the service and people will go find it and uh that's that we're not spending more money i mean the show could cost you know half a million plus to produce an episode you know they can get a lot more mileage out of uh live action than they can uh Tuka and Birdie which is about bird boobs so there we go, a show about bird boobs uh, canceled on Netflix as they look to trim the fat. People trying to figure out how Netflix makes their, their decisions. Nobody knows. And that's my biggest takeaway from this is why the hell don't you make things more transparent? So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, rants, and more here on Clownfish TV. This has been Neon. We'll talk later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.